Hello and welcome to another edition of Saddlers TV. We're here inside the 1888 Lounge at the Banksy Stadium and we're on the defensive this afternoon. We have uh, Paul Downing and James O'Connor as our two guests. Before we get into a host of topics surrounding the football club, we have a big ticket offer coming up. Two tickets to our Chelsea game in the Capital One Cup. All you have to do is email your name and contact phone number to sport at bigcentre.tv. That's your name and contact phone number to sport at bigcentre.tv. We'll come on to Chelsea in a short time. Um, if we can start, though, with last weekend, Doncaster. We weren't at our fluid best, but picked up three points, Jim. Yeah, definitely. Um, as you said, we weren't at our best, but I think that's a, a, good, a sign of a good side. Um, being able to pick up points when you're not quite performing to your capabilities. Um, again, it has been an encouraging start, but that's all it is at the minute. It's just a just a start. Um, we're not getting carried away by any means. Um, and I think it was important after the Berry result that we picked up a picked up a win on Saturday against Doncaster. So we were delighted. It looked to be a frustrating afternoon for about an hour, but does that show how valuable the likes of Tom Bradshaw is, Romain Sawyer, Milanovic, that we've got those players in the squad that can produce a bit of magic when it's not quite going for us? Definitely, yeah. I think um, as a defender, it gives you um, a lot of belief knowing you've got players like that in your side who um, at some point during a game, nine times out of ten, they're going to get a chance and hopefully put it away. So, um, yeah, luckily it was uh, it was TB's turn on Saturday. There were two fantastic finishes. I mean, the first one, a volley into the top corner, the second to lob a six-foot-four goalkeeper. I remember talking to you after the game and we were sort of drawing comparisons between a young Billy Sharp, a player that you obviously mm. played with. Yeah, I think... Um, He's one of them players who he lives. He lives to score goals. Um, you see it every day in training. We we both both witness it daily. Um, just loves putting the ball in the net. He works hard, um, and he's been getting his rewards since he's been at the club, and he's thoroughly uh, thoroughly enjoying his time here. I think. Um, PD and another clean sheet in the bag, but it, it took a, a man of the match performance from Neil Lethbridge, didn't it, to keep us at, at the, well, the, the scores level? Yeah, he made some some good saves at, um, when we needed him from from distance. Um, and he's been sort of a calming influence, really, you know, since he's joined. So uh, I think he would be delighted with the clean sheet as a, the whole back four in the team, really. How impressed have you been with the two summer additions? Obviously, Neil Etheridge has been one of them, Jason Dimitri the other. As two defenders, have they came in and really helped bolster things at the back? Yeah, I think they've improved us. Uh, you know, we've, we've all built up a good relationship and, um, you know, swapping formations. You know, you have to talk and, and know the game. So... Um, I think the whole back four, um, we've slotted in well and uh, you know they've definitely uh, contributed. You see when they went to international duty that uh, I know the, the results didn't go well and um, you know we do miss them when they're not there. He commands his area ever so well, big powerful goalkeeper. Is it reassuring as a defender to know that should they get past the last line of defence that Neil Etheridge will be there and he's quite aggressive in, in his goalkeeping as well? He is, yeah, we, we love it. I mean he's... He loves to come out, and, and sometimes you think he's not going to get there, but you know that's it puts strikers off, and uh, it's great for a defender not having to head him away, and uh, he just comes and comes and does it. So uh, yeah, we leave him to it really. Jim, as a, as a defender, how's it been um, in adapting to those systems? Sometimes it's a three at the back, sometimes it's a four. Have you found it's a, a natural transition? Yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed it to be honest. Um, I've been lucky throughout my career, uh, career that I've played in different dis, uh, different systems and different formations and flipped a lot even during games sometimes. Um, and like I say, I think I think myself and the whole the whole team really have um, really embraced it and took it on board and understood understood why we're doing it. And then um, we've had our results that have um, really benefited the team from it. Does it take a lot of coaching? Is there a lot of hours put in on the on the training ground with Richard O'Kelly and the gaffer? I think it's more. Realising that the players understand it. If mm. the players don't understand it, then we, it's up to us to say and ask, mm. ask the questions. Um, we do a lot of analysis work as well before and after games and stuff like that. And obviously, a lot of um, communication between the individual players helps as well. What does that three at the back do for us with playing with wing backs? It makes us more attacking, I suppose, is the obvious one with the likes of Rico Henry and Jason Dimitri on either side. Yeah, I think I think the main thing is just a different option. It's a different shape to go from. Um, it's one of them. It, it can sometimes we can get frustrated in certain games. We saw it last year, and you need another. People keep saying the plan B. It's just a different way of setting up, I suppose. Um, but yeah, it, it gives a, uh, the gaffer opportunities to get different players into the team at different times. I mentioned Rico and Jace because they've looked ever so dangerous when they go forward. I mean, bags of energy on either flank. Have you found that they possess a sort of a different threat for us than we perhaps had last year? Possibly, yeah. And then you've always got that extra player mm -hmm. uh, at the back, I suppose, mm -hmm. afterwards as well. Um, They've both made really good starts to the season, um, as have a lot of players, to be fair. But them two in particular, for me, have been really impressive. Um, 
PD, I mean, Peterborough on Saturday. We're back up to second following that win against Doncaster. Were you always confident that we could make this almost blistering start to the season? I think so, yeah. I think when, when we came into pre-season and uh, you saw how fit everyone was on the opening day and, um, you know, we've been together for a long time now and uh, you can see the improvement in, in individuals and as a team. So uh, the, the league's always been open and, and teams can beat anyone. So we knew, you know, if we could be more consistent this year and, and you know, obviously score more goals than we did, then we would... Uh, you know, make a strong start. Is that key to it, the fact that, yeah, we've mentioned a couple of the new additions that have came in over the summer, but we have kept that core element to our squad following last year into the new season? Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, you can get to know each other's games and it's it can be upsetting when, you know, lots of new faces come in and, and you don't know each other and it does take time to gel on the pitch. So that was a positive for us and we managed to, you know, bring in a few that did improve us. Uh, you know, competition's healthy and, uh, the young players have stepped up and um, you know we've got a strong squad at the minute like I say competition's fierce and uh, everyone wants to play and people are disappointed when they're not in the lineup even though you know they've probably played well the week before. How much of that's down to the work of John Whitney and over pre-season because lots are made of the amount of games we're playing how quick they're coming um, as we really found that we've started this season on the front foot because of that work we've done during the post-season the maintenance sessions that we put on as well. Yeah, I think it gave us a head start going into pre-season because we, we were hitting the ground running and we didn't have to you know, do too much fitness work at the start because everyone was already fit, so we just got the balls out early. Um, but yeah, we were all mucking in together really and the staff as well and uh, moving in the right direction. And um, you know, we're looking after ourselves, a lot of games and recovering. And um, you know, But obviously with the momentum we've got and, and winning games, it's it's a lot easier to to look forward to them and um, you know, confidence is high so uh, we feel we can you know, always win. Mm. Consistency is always a word that every manager in the league talk about and, and aim for. I think the challenge is how do, you, how do you achieve that consistency for us to mount a, a credible top six challenge? Is there, an, is there a simple answer to it? Not, not really. I think um, we use sort of not getting too carried away when we win and not too down when we uh, get beat, so we'll use that and, and not looking too far ahead. Really, always the next game is important, and um, you know, not taking anyone lightly. Doing our work uh, that we always do, and um, you know, going in, going in with confidence. We, we, we've shown, you know, in, in the cup and in the league that we can beat beat teams, and uh, you know, just keep taking that into each game. Jim, going back before that Doncaster game, we did experience that that mini blip, the, the defeat to Morecambe in the Johnson's paint, and then here to Bury. Did we do anything differently, or did we always believe that, that the philosophies that had done so well in August were going to maintain all the way through into September? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think that's been a big difference this year. There's there's definitely a belief there. Um, a big part of our makeup as a group is how we react to things. Um, and I think after the Morecambe game, we tried to react in the, in the right way. The, the result just didn't go for us. Um, we didn't beat ourselves up too much about it, but we looked at what we could do better and tried to take it into the Doncaster game. Um, there's going to be defeats along the way, there's going to be knocks, there's going to be things that go against you. It's always about how you react, um, and that, that's on a daily basis, really. They're all, the manager and Richard O'Kelly are always putting challenges in front of us to see how we react to things, and I think that stands us in really good stead. Mm, many pundits said before this season kicked off that it's a, a wide-open League One this season. Is there anyone you'd expect... Um, to be up there challenging in the automatic spots in and around the playoffs any strong sides that do you anticipate to be up there challenging with us honestly hopefully us um, like no I say there. honestly I think we're going to every game it's a genuine belief that we can win any game I'm not going to say we, we are going to win every game or we're going to get promoted but yeah like you said there is no outstanding side maybe Bristol City last year were that team um, but if we don't believe we can beat any team in this league then I think we're in the wrong sport, to be honest. Mm. It's been quite a hectic schedule as well up until now. How have you found the, the Saturday, Tuesdays? It's enjoyable. It's, um, I've obviously had um, a couple of in and out years before I come to the club with injuries and so forth. Um, so just playing playing games, really, it's um, it's what we train every day for. It's what we enjoy doing, so I've absolutely loved it. It's tiring, but it's it's, it's fun, especially when you're, when you're winning. PD, is that, is that the, the, the message, really? It's easy to come in every day, train and, and play. You want the games to come thick and fast when the momentum's with us? Yeah, I think so. I think it's always a brighter place when you've won. Um, we always analyse the performance at, at, at Warsaw, so um, you know that we do that. But it is we, we, we want to win games. That's what, why everyone plays, and um, you, know, you want to be successful. So yeah.
many people are t- talking about the maturity of the side. Do you find that as well? It's still a young squad, mm. but they're a year older and a year more mature. Definitely, I think. You know, even though we are a young squad, the number of players that have played a lot of games, you know, be it for this football club or another one, um, you know, there's a lot of us. So we we need to take more responsibility, which we've done, and um, you know, we have got you know, one or two experienced heads that uh, lead the group and you know show a good example. Um, so yeah, I'm going to come on to those experienced heads, Jim, in the in the second half of the show. We're going to take a short break here on Sadler's TV. Um, join us in the second half where we talk about the prospect of facing the special one and the reigning Premier League champions. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Sadler's TV. Paul Downing and James O'Connor, our guests for today's show. As we mentioned in the first half of the programme, we have a ticket competition on the go. To win two tickets to our Capital One Cup clash against Chelsea, all you have to do is email your name and contact phone number to sport at bigcentre.tv. That's your name and contact number to sport at bigcentre.tv and you could be with a chance of getting yourself down here to watch the Premier League champions. On to Chelsea, chaps. Um, Jim, less than a week to go. I mean, Capital One Cup clashes don't get much bigger than you, than this. What are your immediate thoughts going back to after that, that Brighton match when you heard that we drew Jose Mourinho at home? Uh, well, there was about, I think there was about five or six of us still eating our dinner up in the, uh, in the lounge um, with a few fans scattered about. He come up and obviously we were delighted, jumping, punching the air, celebrating. It's a, it's a chance to face the champions of England, which you don't get many opportunities in your career, I'm sure. Um, so yeah, it's, it should hopefully be a great night and what an opportunity to test yourself against the very best. Billy, was it the same for you up here? Yeah, I speak the same. I was in the uh, after the game and um, couldn't quite believe it really because it, it was one of the last to be drawn out and uh, you see some of the ties before and. You thought all the big clubs had gone, so uh, yeah, really delighted and, and one that you know every player is looking forward to. Jim, they haven't quite started the season a day they'd have hoped, and, and nobody expected them to be languishing in the lower half of the Premier League uh, after five games. Do we draw encouragement from that, both from our start and theirs? Uh, not really. Um, it's probably not what, you, what you'd have expected, to be honest. Like you say, they're full of absolute world-class players in every single position. Um, if anything, it might make them more motivated, which should uh, make it interesting. Um, but yeah, I think we got focus on ourselves like we would in any game. Um, we're going to go into it and try, and try and enjoy it, but try and give a good account of ourselves as well and hopefully come out on top. And what are your memories of the two games leading up to the, the Chelsea fixture? Not Forest, Nottingham Forest and uh, and Brighton, two teams from a higher division. Was the approach any different again or was it a case of just believing in ourselves that we're a match for anyone on the day? I think believing in ourselves. I think, to be honest, um, the Forest game might go down as one of the most important of the season mm. because coming off the back of Oldham at home, we was a bit disappointed um, in our performance and the result. And then to go and play how we did against Forest away, um, big championship club, made us realise um, how how positive um, we could really have, the, uh, positive time that we could have actually have this season. Mm. Like you said, we've shown we can compete with those sort of sides, but a Chelsea are a whole other level. To, and we've no disrespect to, to Nottingham Forest at Brighton, but a Chelsea a different ball game. Uh, I'd guess so, yeah, like I say, champions of England, um, two or three players in every single position who would probably walk into most teams in Europe. Um, what an opportunity though, really. Like you say, um, might be the only chance we get in our careers for a, a lot of the players here. Um, so yeah, we're looking forward to it. PD, lots will be made about what side Jose Mourinho picks for the game, um, but does it really matter they've got a squad that's littered with international stars? Yeah, not really. I'm sure we'll, when we do our work before, we'll... We won't know what team they're going to play. Uh, they've got sort of two games now before they the game, so um, I think it can be anyone. Obviously, they've had a difficult start, so um, you know it's going to be difficult because they've got so many world class players, like people say. And I'm sure we all want to, you know, retain the competition and, and do well in it. So it's going to be a difficult game. In a sense, though, is the pressure off on Wednesday night? I know we put pressure on yourselves to perform well, but nobody expects us to get a result against Chelsea. So, with the pressure off, is this a big opportunity for us on Wednesday? I think so. I think it's a big opportunity for us to perform in a, a sort of a big game, and um, you know, it's it's going to be a difficult match, and um, we, we, we want to look forward to it and you know see how we can test ourselves and. Um, you know, hopefully give the fans you know something to to fight about, and there'll be a good atmosphere outside. And you know, we want to give it our best. Like you say, it looks like it's going to be a sellout 
down here on Wednesday. The world's media will be watching closely, I'm sure. Um, are these the sort of <coughs> games that you dream about growing up, the sort of big matches, having to test yourself against the big name players? Yeah, I mean, we played, obviously you don't get used to that in our division mm. and um, it will be one we look back on in our career and you know, hopefully it can be a positive one. I think we look back in the games, sort of the Preston last season when the Banks is, is full, that mm. uh, you know it can bring the best out of players, and you know I'm sure we'll give them the respect they deserve, but also you know wire in straight away and, and get in their faces, and you know in, enjoy the game as well, but uh, be competitive and uh, you know try and win. Would have played five games between the draw being made and welcoming Chelsea down here. Has it been a distraction at all in the camp? Not at all. Um, from a personal point of view, and I think I, I speak for the rest of the lads as well. Really, we've got a good bunch here, and we know our bread and butter this year is is the league. Um, it's a nice little um, little cherry to have um, mm. at the top of the cake to look forward to, I suppose. But um, like I say, we put it to the back of our minds, and we will do until after the Peterborough game. Mm. It's a young squad this season, as we already mentioned. What will this game do for the likes of Rico Henry, Reese Flanagan, some of the younger players, Kieran Morris, that are in there to experience this, to have the Premier League champions come down here at such a young age? What will it do for them? Hopefully it will show them where where they want to where they want to achieve playing. Really, um, like I say, to to experience it at any age in your career is a is a big thing. But as a young lad, especially, what an opportunity really to see where you're at. Mm. You were, have already played in some high profile games and thinking cup finals, playoff finals as well. Do you feel the magnitude of those games when you're out there on the pitch? No, maybe in the build up. I think I think you do. Um, but when you're actually on the pitch, not at all. To be honest, it's actually quite surprising how relaxed you can sometimes feel in them uh, on them occasions um, but like I say I think a lot of players don't really know until they've experienced it so again it's a, it's a good opportunity for that We already saw last year PD what a good cut run can do for us it'd be nice to go a step further again this year wouldn't it? It would be yeah I think being out of the, the JPT now it's mm -hmm. um, you know it can be good for your season having a good cut run so uh, we won't look too far ahead I mean obviously a very difficult game and um, no expectations of us to, to win the game but uh, it would be nice, you know, to obviously another chance to get to Wembley if you can, if you can get there. So um, we'll we'll look at Chelsea and uh, obviously very difficult game, but it would be nice to keep the run going. How difficult is it to do your homework on a side who could change their eleven and still pose a huge threat? Yeah, impossible, really. <laughs> I think I don't know what we'll do. Like like Jim says, we'll concentrate on ourselves mm. and uh, you know, not to worry too much about our lineup because it's going to be very strong whatever they play. So. Um, yeah, I'm sure the gaffer will be watching them and, and trying to pick, you know, the odd weakness maybe, and uh, see where we can get our game plan to, you know, to to try and um, be successful against them. And of course, midweek fixtures for Chelsea usually means a, a trip to Monaco or, or Paris. They won't fancy coming down here on a Wednesday night. It could be wet, could be windy down here at the Banks. Could that work into a effect? I'm just looking for positives yeah. ahead of the game. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. I mean, they're too experienced and. Uh, you know, obviously, like you say, with they might have more motivation with their start to the season, so uh, they're going to be wanting to win, and um, you know they'll be right at it, and uh, know that if they you know, do disrespect us and not give enough effort, then you know they're going to be in for a tough game, and uh, you know they won't want to be uh, you know, the world's media watching in another upset and uh, you know out another cup competition. Do you ever afford yourself to think of what it would be like to knock Chelsea out of the, the Capital One Cup on Wednesday? I've not really thought about it. I think obviously we've got another game to mm -hmm. go for and uh, you know, it will come round quickly, but we'll just take as it comes and see see what happens and deal with it You know, if we do uh, knock them out. Jim, the prospect of marking a Diego Costa or Wedemar Falcao, is it something that excites you rather than daunts you? Yeah, definitely. Um... Like I say, it could be any one of three or four. Really, mm -hmm. um, the analysis uh, meeting at the start of next week should be fun. Probably last a couple of a uh, couple of hours, really, with the amount of players that, that are there. But yeah, um, I've said it a few times already. It's, it's just a, a great opportunity to go out there, hopefully enjoy the occasion, give a good account of yourselves, and hopefully cause a shock. That's what we, that's what we'll be going for. Mm, the word uh, game management's always banded around. As a senior player out there, uh, should you be selected on on Wednesday? Is it sort of up to yourself, Adam Chambers, the skipper, to sort of manage the younger players through this? It'll be an experience that not many of them would would have had before. Possibly, yeah. But um, like I say, I don't really um, think of any players in that team as young players. Mm -hmm. We're just they're just good players. You know what I mean? Um, we're all a bunch who all pull pull our own weight. Uh, 
offer something to the table. So I think I think on the night, um, you'll see how people, different people, react to to the night really, and it, a few might surprise a few as well. Mm, PD, like like Jim says, although it's a young squad, it's a squad they've got a lot of appearances in there as well. I mean, you're a vice captain, still relatively young, early twenties, yet yeah. perhaps seen as one of the more senior members of the squad. Yeah, I think uh, people think youth, you can be not fearful, and uh, that's been a good thing. We've we're young, but we're we're very confident in our in our ability, and we know. Uh, we've we've got some good players, so we all, you know, try and take uh, our experiences and, and and put them together to make us, uh, you know, the strongest team we can be. And just very quickly, we've heard a lot from Milan Laukovic and Neil Etheridge this week, being Chelsea former Chelsea players themselves. Um, how different is it that the setup here, as opposed to a Chelsea, where young players will get a chance here, whereas it's markedly more difficult at Chelsea? Yeah, I think you know, that is, is obviously they have. Such a strong competition, and um, it's difficult as a young player to, to get in. And I'm sure they'll. You know, Milan came on loan to us, and um, a lot of their players will have to do that. Compared to us, I think. You know, obviously, for us, we haven't got their sort of money, so you do get an opportunity to, to play. And you know, there can be some good players at Chelsea who will never play for their first team. So um, yeah, it doesn't mean one way is right or the other way is wrong. It's just. That's the the difference between the two clubs. Well, PD, Jim, good luck both on Saturday and uh, Wednesday against against Chelsea. That's all we've got time for here on Sadler's TV. You can stay up to date with all the goings on at the club on Twitter at WFC Official. And we look forward to you joining us next time. <laughs>